Hey, good morning, Grace Baptist Church. Thankful to be with you this morning uh, for the Psalm of the Week. Today we're Psalm 93. Psalm 93, just five short verses. And what we learn today is that God is King, that God is King. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, whether you believe it or not, uh, He is the King of the universe. And uh, it's just a beautiful truth for uh, those who follow Christ because we can rest in that, we can trust in that. Uh, we can have confidence in what's going to happen in the future because God is the king. So let's read the psalm and see what God has for us this morning. Psalm 93, 1 through 5. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. So in the short psalm, uh, we see twice there where the psalmist says, established, firm, and secure. And then he says, stand firm, right? So the psalmist is thanking God. He's thanking God. He's giving thanks uh, that he can trust in the security have, uh, security he has in God, that his life, his future is firm and secure in God. You know, we just passed uh, our first uh, primary season. The uh, primary election was in early August, and so the elections are upon us. Uh, the uh, advertisements are going to come full force, and and we're going to have to put up with a lot of a lot of nonsense. Um, you know, God has never been elected. God has always been king. He is the king eternal. Uh, and, and we'll see this in just a minute. We can trust in God, not in uh, the powers of this world. So the first thing we see, though, clearly, as I said, is that Lord is king. Look there in verse 1. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty. He is armed in strength. Indeed, the world is established firm and secure, right? So you see the language of, of a monarchy, that he is robed in majesty. Uh, he is robed in majesty twice, right? He is enthroned. He is established, firm, and secure. God is king. He is ruling over all of the universe, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. Even though it seems like things in the world are out of control and that nobody is ruling, God is king. He is in control. The second thing we see is that God is eternal. We see that in verse 2. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. Now, when you begin to think about eternity, it fries your mind. As a kid, I used to lay in bed and try to think, how can it be that God has always existed? How can something always exist? And our minds are too, too small to grasp that. But the eternal eternality of God uh, is, is, is repeated again and again in Scripture. That God has had no beginning. He has no end. Yesterday, today, forever. Right? He's always been the same. And so God is eternal. And as I mentioned earlier, that God is king. He's never been elected or he's never been, uh, in, in a sense, established as king. He has always been king. Uh, and we can have great joy in that because if God is eternal and he is the king eternal, then we know that our future is secure in God. Not just today, but tomorrow is secure in God because he is never going to pass away. He is never going to change. So we see that the Lord is king that the Lord is eternal, and we see that the Lord is mighty. He is a powerful king. He can do anything he wishes. And the psalmist here switches to a, a word picture of, of water, of the waves of the ocean. The power of the ocean is what he tries to imagine God's power as. We see this in verse 3. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty, right? So we get just a glimpse of the awesome power of God. God's power is infinite. And as we consider the power of the ocean, if you've ever walked out into the ocean and felt the breakers, right? He mentions those breakers pounding when a wave hits you. And there's, sometimes there's nothing you can do to stand up. Uh, the, the breakers in the ocean have destroyed great and mighty ocean vessels. Uh, the, the ocean is incredibly powerful. And so the psalmist is trying to somehow get us to explain a sense of how powerful God is. And he says, God is mighty. He's mightier than all the breakers, all the waves, all the power of the ocean. God is mighty. And aren't you glad that the king that you serve is more powerful than any force in the universe? 
that should give us hope, that should give us rest, that should make us feel, feel secure and established. The fourth thing we see is that the Lord has spoken. We see that in verse 5. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm, right? Statutes is another, another way of saying God's commands, his precepts, his laws. God's statutes are his word. He has declared truth. God has spoken and it is true. Now, that's certainly something that separates God from all the politicians uh, that are going to be uh, you know, going on and on over the next couple of months. What God says is true, and it's binding, right? Uh, po certainly politicians, once they're elected, they have some authority given to them by God. They have derivative authority. But everything that God says is binding on our life. We must submit to the king of the universe. His statutes stand firm. They're never going to change. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It will never pass away. So the Lord has spoken. And when we think about the fact that God's truth will stand forever, that gives us great comfort, right? Because when we're told in the scriptures that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, if you profess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's a beautiful truth. And so when we believe that God's word stands firm and he says he will save all who come to him in faith, then, then we can trust in that. We can stand firm in that. We can be secure in that. When Jesus says that no one is going to snatch any of mine out of my hand, we can trust in that. We can believe in that. We're secure in that. And so God has spoken. His word is binding. His word is comforting. The last thing we see is that God is holy. And we see that at the end of verse 5. Your holiness adorns your house for endless days. There at the endless days, we see this under the glimpse of his eternality. But he says, your holiness adorns your house. Now, oftentimes we think of God's holiness, we think of the fact that God is completely separated from sin. And that's true. God can have no part in sin. Uh, he is completely separate from sin. But God also has a, a majestic holiness. He is, he is transcendent. He is separate from all of his creation. And we see that at the beginning of the psalm, right? The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. He has this majestic holiness. A third aspect of God's holiness is what I call his intrinsic holiness, that intrinsically God is pure, okay? He cannot be any less God than he is. And so we consider the attributes of God, his love, his truth, his compassion, his mercy. He's all these things perfectly, and he will never be less than perfect in all that he is. Therefore, he is holy. He will never be short of who he is as God, the king of the universe. And so we can trust in that. When God speaks, it is true, it is sinless. When God acts in our lives, when he acts throughout all of creation, his actions are holiness. Now, we certainly can't say that about the politicians in the world, right? And so God, is, he is king, he is eternal, he's mighty, he has spoken, and he is holy. And all his actions towards us are holy, they are pure. His love is perfectly holy, his love is pure, and we can trust in that love. We are secure in that love forever. So aren't you so glad this morning that God is the king of the universe? He, his, his reign, his rule is firmly established. And as his children, we are established and we stand firm because God is king. Well, Grace, I can't wait to worship with you this Sunday as we come together on the Lord's Day uh, to give thanks to the Lord, give praise to the Lord, sing his praises, and to hear his word proclaimed. And so I pray and trust that you'll gather with us uh, this Lord's Day look forward to seeing you there. Let me pray. Father, I thank you that you are the king of the universe, that we stand firm. Uh, we are established because you are the king. You are holy. Uh, you are mighty and powerful. Father, you are eternal. We trust in all those things and we rest in all those things. Help us to live accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Grace, I love you. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Bye-bye.